Hi. Um, do you want to be my friend? What? Hey, no, I'm not interested. Uh, okay. Oh. So after doing a little bit of research, I found out that there's about six items in a lightsaber that are key. The hilt, the power cell, the kyber crystal, the lens, the plasma generator of some sort, and then the force field generator. So let's keep something in mind. This involves the hilt. The blade of a lightsaber is about 15 million degrees Kelvin, maybe more, since it's made of plasma. Now imagine when you hold a cup of coffee, what happens to your hands? Oh Jesus, God damn. Mm. You begin to see the problem pretty quickly. Um, so there is a fix for this in the Star Wars universe, but we'll get into that later. So what kind of metal could we make this hilt out of that is the most heat resistant metal on the planet Earth? Tantalum hafnium carbide. Now, tantalum hafnium carbide can withstand temperatures of up to 4,000 degrees Celsius, which is nowhere near 15K. But, screw it, let's go with it, it's as close as we're gonna get. So after checking out a bunch of websites that I'm pretty sure have put me on a government watch list, I found a couple of pieces of information. Looking at the lightsaber hill, it'd probably be about 4.5 pounds, something along those lines. So, for the powder alone, I found that one kilogram of this substance of tantalum carbide is equivalent to $1,200 for the powder alone. Now, that's not to mention the labor, the crafting, and what it would take to get this substance into a solid form. So, we might have to add a little bit extra onto that, pay for labor, and the number I came to was about $10,000 just for the hilt, if you made it out of tantalum carbide, <laughs> which is ridiculous. A kyber crystal is rare. You ain't going down to Jared's and picking up your girl a kyber crystal. They're rare, but not extremely rare. They're found throughout the galaxy, and they coagulate in certain kinds of caves. So I would be safe to say that in our world, we're not going to find any kind of kyber crystal. And they're pretty localized to their environment, these kyber crystals. So I did find one of the rarest gems in the world that is specific to its location. It's found in the Marilani Hills in the Manyara region in northern Tanzania on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro. Girls don't get any ideas. No, there's no girls watching this. Who am I kidding? Now, I'm sure this price goes higher, but for a small crystal that would suffice for a lightsaber, you can get one for about $6,318. You want a little baby one, you can get it for less. We're going to go with this for now. It's rare, and it's not unreasonable. That's pretty simple, there's no such thing as glass or a lens that can withstand 15 million Kelvin. But the next best thing that we have is something called a pyroceram glass, which if uh, used with temperature it can go up to about 1,256 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, if you were to purchase this, it's about $25, but if you were to take it and hone it into a little lens, craft it and have someone do that, it'd probably go up to about $225. Now this kind of relates back to the hilt. But in Star Wars, the theory is that to resist the heat and to kind of focus the blade, there's a force field generator inside of the lightsaber. That one goes out and around the lightsaber to make it solid, because otherwise just plasma going through plasma, you wouldn't be able to swing and hit another lightsaber. It also contains the beam. And then two, there's also a little internal force field that kind of keeps the heat away from the, the grip, which would then make it so you could have any kind of metal handle. So, it kind of negates it, and since we don't have a force field generator, I'm kind of axing it off the list. Now, as per an interesting article that I read, in Star Wars Episode One, Qui-Gon Jinn sticks his lightsaber in a heavy blast door, and he makes a long cut. Now, assuming this door is steel, and you time how long it takes to heat the door up and melt the metal, you can calculate the energy the saber must have had to power that kind of plasma. And it turns out to be about 20 megawatts, and I have not fact-checked this, I'm not, a, I'm not Einstein, okay? but about 20 megawatts. So the power of a lightsaber could draw, could power at least 14,000 houses in America. We have a problem, or do we? Tesla just built a huge ass battery in Australia that's 100 megawatts and it costed $50 million. But if we used one fifth of that, which would be 20 megawatts, which could power this lightsaber, we would spend about 10 million US dollars on the power source. And it would basically look like some kind of a generator farm behind you and you'd have it plugged in like Nyeh. But if that's what we gotta do, that's what we gotta do. I mean, Oprah had midgets at one point. We can do what we have to do here. So when we add all of this up, We come to $10,016,543 just when I thought I hadn't blown enough money on Steam.
or VR headsets or paper gosh dang towels. I hate being an adult. Hello? Hello? This is Jens Jensen. Is this Andrew? Who is this? This is Jens Jensen with Weapons Core. Now, I was wondering if you had a moment to speak about a real lightsaber. Hear me out. It's 2017. I throw numbers at you. You tell me if you're interested. Okay? Okay, so... What the fuck? How... Seriously? I was about to reveal the secret of an age and give you a real lightsaber. You're poon. So for the people who are interested, if you shout out a couple million dollars, you should be able to get a really ramshackled piece of crap version of a lightsaber that probably won't work, but using the guidelines for what a lightsaber is, that's probably about how much it would cost to buy it, to make a lightsaber with materials on Earth right now with technology. So, I mean, basically it's a waste of time because it, do, it probably wouldn't work anyways. <laughs> so, you better be rich. Anyways, if you like that, just subscribe below. Hope you had a good time and we learned a little something stupid. So, as always, I love you guys and until next time. Woo!